All right, yeah, so then we went around here in the 50 inch. Oh. What's going on, everybody? My name is Brian. You're watching Anglin Anarchy. I've got my good friend, the Northwoods musky madman, uh, Rich Reinert himself. Uh, we were just taking a little peek at Eagle Lake there. Nothing you need to know about. Uh, but what we want to do today is talk about the upcoming Wisconsin Muskie Expo that Rich started. When did you start that? Uh, this shit will be 15 years. 15 years. 15 yeah. years. Seems like it's five years ago is the I know. first time Rick and I were I know. Up there with you. <laughs> you know, when we first started, Penny's kids worked the show, of course. Mm -hmm. Yep. And her son, Austin, he's always been very, when it comes to math, the kid's a human calculator. And I remember when he started, he was the one at the counter taking the money. Mm -hmm. And today, he's like, He's he has some kind of accounting job, I think, with the state of Wisconsin. <laughs> He's a big wig, I think. I don't know. Awesome. I'm not quite sure, but I mean, I look at the. But all these kids come back every year, mm -hmm. no matter where they are and what they're doing. They always make sure they come back for the show. That's amazing. It's an amazing so. show. It's uh, one of the first shows that when uh, Rick, my father-in-law, when we were just starting out, we weren't even Chaos Tackle yet. We were East Sox Sox Assault. Sox Assault. Buck yeah. um, so this is a really special show for me. Uh, it's in, you know, it's it's been a long time coming, I think, uh, when it first started anyway, for a Northwoods Muskie show. Because everything was Milwaukee, it was Chicago, you know. We needed a northern Wisconsin muskie show, I think, and this this fits that bill. Well, what we were, what I was thinking about, there were so many people from up north that didn't want to go to the city. Mm -hmm. That's really what it boiled down to. Second thing was, I think what happens in this industry, and you was, you know this as well as I do, the muskie industry has become so commercialized. Mm -hmm. It really has. Let's be honest, okay? So when it came to speakers, I think at these other shows. They had what I would call television fishermen, sure. per se, okay? You know, shame on me for saying that. <laughs> but, you know, here we are doing, you know, I mean, back then there was no YouTube. Right. There was none of this stuff. I really don't even understand it, okay, <laughs> still to this day. And you actually are the professor. Actually, we had you speak at the show to help people because there's so many people want to get into this. But at the end of the day, even when you look at, you know, you look at YouTube, I really, it's become, everybody's doing it, but when it gets right down to it, and I've said this time and time again, you know, you angling anarchy, you know, I know what's uh, today's angler, yep. you know, uh, Burning Eights, you know, Smith's Fishing Outdoors, um, I don't know, those are really, I think, really the main ones, am I wrong, or? There, I mean, there's, there's a lot of them, I mean, you've got Doug Wagner doing stuff, oh, you've yeah. got, um, ben Stone in Minnesota, you've got Matt Vavrock in Iowa, you know. Yeah, there, Matt Vavrock. Yep, there's there's guys here and there, but uh, it's it's a small niche little thing, and I don't know, I just, I have a blast doing it. Uh, it's gotten me uh, to the point where I know so many people in this industry because of it, because that and Chaos Tackle, that it just, it's it's real special to me, and I, I love it so much, man. I just love yeah, it. <laughs> I understand that, you know. I, uh, you know, that's why I do some of these. You know, I've done some with Burning Aids mm -hmm. and with Smiths. We've talked. You're busy. You're always, <laughs> this is kind of crazy how this happened today. That means this happened quick. Yeah. So, um, but I do it because I think there's so much misinformation out there. You've got so many guys coming into this, and I think they mean well, but there's a lot of bad information going sure. on. And I think when I mention these, I think people are going to get good information sure. from this that, that core group. Yep. And that's why I did this, you know, as, you know, Bernie Nates had me come on or Smith's Fishing Outdoors because I'm not saying I've got all the answers, but after 55 years, I've kind of figured out a few things. Yeah, a couple few. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, you know, and I think, you know, if you can pass on some good education to people, mm -hmm. you know, at least experienced education, I think that's good. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's all right. Right on, man. Well, we are going to talk about a couple of the vendors that are going to be at the show. Sure. We're going to take a look at a couple of the kind of the new cool baits that people should look out oh, for. Oh, yeah. So I'll hand it over to you. What are we looking at here? Well, first of all, the, the show is, you know, the Wisconsin Muskie Expo is March 15th and through the 17th. Mm -hmm. The doors are going to open up Friday at 2 o'clock, as usual, as they always do. The show will run till about 8 o'clock at night. 
Okay. A lot of people want to get home, you know, have a hot toddy, you <laughs> oh, know, yeah. and they want to make sure their wife's happy so that they, <laughs> that they, when they come back to the show on Saturday morning, you know, that they're, you know, they're not in trouble. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what's happening at this show. You know, we, every year we're selling more two and three day passes sure. every year. It keeps getting people. The hotels are booked up around there. Yep. Uh, last week we, you know, we keep in touch with the hotels and one of the hotels doubled. I mean, they're full. There's no way That's they can amazing. take on. There's three hotels that can't take on any more hotel sure. rooms. So anyways, you got Saturday. Yep. Okay. It opens, the doors open up at 9 a.m. And then we're open up till 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, we have a lure swap, which is sponsored by the Wausau Area Muskies, Inc. Okay. And so they're raising money to help, you know, put fish in the, you know, in the lakes and stuff. Yep. And then Sunday, it's 9 a.m. till uh, 3 p.m. Perfect. And so we got that going on. We were just talking about, you know, just about YouTube and the people. One of the reasons I started this show because the other shows would have, the speakers would be kind of what I would consider like television fishermen, okay? Mm -hmm. The speakers that I have that we, I try to bring in, and it's getting tougher <laughs> because right now, if you remember back in the day, mm -hmm. You know, when you look at the faces of the industry, the fishing industry, musky industry, you had Al Lindner, mm -hmm. you had Spence Petros, yep. you know, you had Tony Rizzo, yep. you had, you know, Carl Moss, and you had, you know, uh, all, you know uh, Jim Ralstad, and you had, you know, Bill Binkelman, and you had Babe Winkleman, and you had all these guys that were faces in this industry, and right now, there's no more faces. <laughs> There's just a lot of young people coming into this and they've been fishing muskies four, five, six, maybe 10 years and they want to be that. Sure. And yeah. that's not the way it works. Yep. And I think those were the growing days. So it, what I've done with speakers is I want the fishing guides. Yep. I want the guys that are actually on, you know, in the business and maybe some of the faces that, you know, that people are going to uh, you know, someday recognized to be the faces of the industry. Sure. I look at you, Chaos Tackle. You, in the beginning, you know, Rick Elbers, yep. your father-in-law, owned Chaos Tackle, okay? Mm -hmm. To me, you know, Rick didn't care. Rick wanted to go fishing, and he wanted to make baits. <laughs> you are the face of Chaos Tackle. Well, you really are. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you, you are the face of Chaos Tackle. You've been with it from since day one. Sure. So that's what I mean by this. So when you look at some of the old timers, you know, I'm an old timer. I'm, you know, drying up. I'm getting old. You know, then you got Mike Keys. And Mike Keys are the same age. Sure. And yet Mike Keys has got energy like a jalapeno pepper. Oh, yeah. He's all over the place. The guy is unbelievable. You ever watch that guy fish? He's a madman. Oh, yeah. He's. I wish I still had his energy, but, you know. It's tough, you know, but then you got guys like Jeff Van Remortal. He's definitely yeah. a face. Um, you, you know, you've got, like on Friday, you've got Taylor Flannery, and I'm yep. sure you've heard of Taylor. Oh, yeah. He's coming on. Then uh, after Taylor, you've got Michael Hansen. And Michael Hansen, I think, is going to be a face. He's, yeah, he's amazing. The if guy, not a face, the hair. Oh, the hair is unbelievable. <laughs> he might have it cut off by the time. He said he was going to cut it off. So yeah, it'll be interesting well, to see if he still got it. You know what? The guy is great. Though. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's And he catches big fish. Yep. He went into Hayward and everybody said, oh, Hayward's dried up. Some of these old timers. Hayward's dried up. We're not catching any big fish. And he made them all wrong. Yeah, if you look at the social media. Oh, my gosh. He's, he's one fish. of the most... Uh, Michael impresses me. I've fished with Michael. We've gone out and the kids, he is... He's a class act. Yep. I think anybody that wants to hire a guy in Hayward, he's the man. He is, and okay. you're going to have guaranteed fun with him. Oh. He's so fun to be He's so around. professional, yeah. but yet he's fun. Yep. So then you got Brian Schaefer and you got Dan Gropengeiser. Yep. And I don't have to explain Brian Schaefer to yep. anybody. He's kind of like he's a frequent uh, person on Make Keys Outdoors. Yep. He's a great musky fisherman. I have the highest respect for Brian. Um, yeah, I know we spelled his, I think Amy spelled his name wrong. Oops. You know, he let me know about it. Yeah, it's B-R-Y-A-N. So, you know, he's, Brian is a great fisherman. He's quiet. Yeah. But he's friendly, but he's quiet, and he just goes about and does his business. Yep, he does it well. Saturday, you know, we were talking about, you know, there's a lot of faces, but there's a lot of people out there that are really great sticks. Mm -hmm. 
And so at 10 o'clock on Saturday, Tom Harrison, mm -hmm. who owns Tom's Custom Musky Baits, where, is going to speak. And I'm going to kind of help him out. He's 72 years old. Mm -hmm. He's actually kind of shy sure. and quiet. But there is nobody right now, I think, living today that has caught more 50 inchers. Let's forget about Green Bay. Yep. Let's forget about uh, Lake St. Clair. We're talking about inland water musky fishing. Yeah. As I don't know if anybody has caught more 50 inchers inland water muskies as Tom Harrison. Sure. Matter of fact, one year he got, I think, six over 50. Wow. I mean, for inland Wisconsin lakes, folks, that is amazing. That is. Uh, he's really yeah. a good fisherman. Uh, he's, I know. Vince, you know, Vince from Chaos yep. went fishing with them this last year. I think Vince caught real, two really nice fish with him, mm -hmm. you know, um, on his own baits. Sure. You know, <laughs> but, you know, and that's fine. But uh, he's really, that's a seminar you don't want to miss. Yep. Uh, right after Tom, then I'm going to be speaking okay. um, at noon. And then at 2 o'clock, I've got something a little bit different going on, mm -hmm. unlike a lot of things. No fishermen, but you know what? I watch musky fishermen, and they, you know, they'll spend four hundred dollars on a reel. Mm -hmm. They'll spend three hundred and fifty dollars, four hundred dollars on a, on a musky rod, and then they'll go to a closeout bin looking for the cheapest braid they can buy. And what, uh, it just totally escapes me is that that's the only connection you got between you and that fish. Yeah. It's not the rod. It's not the reel. It's that line. Mm -hmm. And today, musky baits are getting to be so expensive that not only are you, when you hook a fish, you know, should you be paying attention to your line, but what about that $50 bait you're throwing? Yeah. You won't have to get that back if you get stuck on a log or, you know. But, exactly. Yeah. So the man, a lot of people don't understand this. I, I watch Facebook how they argue, like, I like this line, I like that line. Sorry, people, <laughs> but that line, you know, is usually made by three or four manufacturers. Sure. Yep. So, um, Finns is a private label mm -hmm. of an OEM manufacturer. Okay. That mm -hmm. makes line for a lot of different companies. Yep. Um, but the man that basically innovated super lines braid, in other words, spider wire back in the beginning yep. is going to be speaking at two o'clock. That will be very cool to see. Because that's the man you want to talk to. Yeah. This is the man that started it. Mm -hmm. This is the man that people still go to when they have technical questions. Sure. And that's the man you want to listen to. Two o'clock on Saturday. And then, of course, last but not least, I've got Steve Jonasy. Oh, right on. You know. Mr. And we all, the Muskies himself. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. So he'll be speaking at four o'clock. Awesome. Sunday, we've got Jeff Van Remortal. And, you know, nobody... No, there's nobody better in the Northwoods of Wisconsin that I see. I mean, I look on Facebook and I see people, you know, up in northern Wisconsin and they get a 36 or 38. And Jeff's getting 43s, 45s, sure. and, and lots of them. He is just an amazing he's a good stick. stick. He's the nicest guy on the face of the planet. And to reiterate, he's an amazing stick. <laughs> it's just a very unreal. So um, I remember when he started. Yeah. You know, I was still guiding... You know, I still got a little bit, very little, mm -hmm. okay, but I remember when he started, and he was an animal then, and he's even, he's a mega animal oh, now, yeah. and then, of course, then you got, <laughs> let me tell you, of all the people, I think we've talked about mm -hmm. Mike Keys. Oh, yeah. I think of all the shows that are in the marketplace, television, he's on television, he's in KO, KO Outdoors, yep. he's on Roku, TV, you know, yep. TV, yep. I watch it. I watch everything he does. It's kind of funny. He's my neighbor. Where we live five <laughs> miles apart, you know. I, I think there's a lot of great musky fishermen in that area yep. where we live, you know. But he's a really good stick. He's very humble. He won't tell you he's a good stick. He says, you know, he he makes TV shows, but yep. Mike really is a good stick. And um, you know, he's going to be speaking at uh, at uh, noon. Cool. So well, and, and one of the things, and I've told Mike this before, and I, I tell anybody that will listen, when I started wanting to use cameras to capture my musky adventures, you know, when I had that one GoPro and I wanted to expand it to two or three, I was watching Mike Keys, and I wasn't necessarily, I mean, I was watching the musky fishing part of it, but I was looking at his boat going, 
how does he have those cameras set up in there? Like, what, what are these two down here for? What are these two up here for? So I based the way I have my boat set up basically on how he had his boat or how I could tell his boat was set up by watching him on TV. So To watch him set up his boat, I filmed with Mike years ago, mm -hmm. okay? And, but to watch him today, he's very meticulous. Mm -hmm. He knows exactly what angle he wants to, you know, set everything at. Uh, he, his, his equipment is, I mean, he's got some mega expensive <laughs> equipment in that boat. And it shows when he, you know, does his filming, yeah. you know. Um, he's, he's very good at what he does. His shows are real. Mm -hmm. I know some people get on there and say, well, you caught a small fish. Guess what, people? That's real. That's real. That's the real deal. Yep. What you see is what you get with Mike Keys. Yeah, so, there's, there's lots of days with no fish. So any day, especially for me, for myself anyway, any day with any muskie, I don't care if it's 34 inches or 34 pounds, I'm just happy to have that sucker in the boat. So I love the realness of it. I try to do that in the videos that I make. No fish days, one fish days, small fish days. It's all musky fishing, and uh, for the most part, people seem to appreciate that. And I think that. that's important. Yeah. I think people appreciate reality yep. because there's a lot of stuff out there that's fluff and it's not. Yep. So it's all good. Right so, on, so that's our speakers. Okay. And then as far, you know, here's the cool thing. This year, I think we've got uh, 92 vendors this year. Okay. Um, it's, it's as big as it'll ever be. Yep. I can't make it any bigger and I'm, I don't want to. Sure. Be here's the thing that gets me about people that come to the show. Some people will come in there, run in the door because there's such a hurry. They'll go to certain booths, buy their baits, and then they'll go out and complain. Well, that show wasn't very big. <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> Why don't you take the time and walk up and down the aisles? Yep. Talk to the vendors. Talk to the people. If you have a problem working at bait, talk to the manufacturer. They'll teach you how to do that. Yep. You know, there's a lot of booths in there. It's This show is the biggest vendor-wise of mm -hmm. any of the shows out there right now. Right on. So, and I've been to most of them except Musky Max. Right on. Yep. So, I know it's it's a big show and there's some great vendors. One of the things we do there is... Yes, we have some of the bigger companies like Chaos Tackle, mm -hmm. you know, Team Rhino's there. Yep. But we also have a lot of small cottage companies there. So, you know, one of the co cottage companies we have, and it's been crazy. I'm going to tell you right now, it has been stupid crazy. <laughs> We've had, we get messages from people asking questions, and probably the number one asked question so far, there's been talk of, Bam Bam Bait Company, are mm -hmm. they coming? Yep. Well, let me tell you to say right now, they are coming. They have a boot there. This is a Bam Bam Bowfin right here. I don't know how you do this stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, you can show the people but the yeah. baits. I know Check Brian wants out. that. <laughs> That's the Bowfin, and he will have a boot there. And this bait, it's amazing. Brady Martz, the maker of this bait, is a really humble, quiet, doesn't like to talk about his fishing, but the man he, catches some fish. He's an awesome guy. I met him one of the first years I went to the Musky Max show in Pennsylvania. I met Brady, and we hit it off right away, and, I mean, we, we chat back and forth. Um, so I'm, I'm very interested in getting my hands on some of these uh, bowfin baits. Yeah, well, I've seen what they do in the water. They're pretty, pretty fantastic. A nice quality bait, and... Uh, Brady and Bam Bam is going to be at the show. Uh, he's got a pretty good stock of baits. I know we are just, I'm telling you, we have been hammered. Yeah. That has been the number one question. Is it true that Bam Bam's coming to the show? Yes, he is. He's going to be right next to Ross's sport uh, shop, you know, and, uh, you know, he's got a boot there and he will be there. So that's one awesome. that people are looking for. Um, Probably the easiest thing to do, I'm just going to run here real quick. Yep. I know you got X amount of time, you know, <laughs> is people ask questions. Yep, Hirsch's Ghost Tales is back in business. This is their new black uh, crappie pattern. Uh, it's going to be in with uh, uh, two tamer rods, uh, dream catcher tackle, big game, and there'll be Hirsch's Ghost Tales. So Hirsch's Hirsch's Ghost Tail is back. A lot of big fish through the years have been caught yeah. on this. This is their new black crappie pattern. You definitely want to stop by um, and see him. A lot of people are familiar with the fact that I used to make a bait called an ambush. Mm -hmm. um, because due to my health and stuff, it's harder for me to make baits. Um, the company uh, is now with uh, Big Guy Baits. Yep. Babe. Uh, babe. Yeah, yep. Great guy. Oh, yeah. The guy's yeah. awesome. He's really 
good people. Mm -hmm. And but he makes my original. There was several different models of the ambush. Um, this is the fluted version. A lot of people have asked about it. I have made it, but he's going to highlight this bait this year. Um, we were looking at this earlier. I mean, if you look and show them, that's bluegill. If you look at the colors, I mean, that's everything that a bluegill has. He's got perch and he's got black crappie. He's got a lot of patterns. He's worked very hard. He's doing a great job of building these and i've had a lot of nice fish caught on these baits so he'll he'll be bringing that out awesome. at the show and then uh pandemonium tackle i've never been crazy about this but they've got like this crystal mm -hmm. you know and I, I brought this because it really looks good in the water but the interesting thing also, they've got a titanium shaft. Oh, right on, yep. And so when you can bend this bait up, you know, and it gets all twisted, yeah. it just basically goes back to the original position. Right. Got See. a little teaser in the back. And I noticed at some of the shows that they did, people were jumping on it. It looks good in the water. Mm -hmm. But that's from Pandemonium. They're known for making the SRJ. Yep. One of uh, Jeff Van Remortal's favorite, mm -hmm. you know, baits. So, you know, that's going to be there. Um, here's one most people have never seen. Um, I think I'm going to leave this with you. Okay. You know, you, you know, it'll get thrown, but this is called a Huntsy tail. I'm not one that is really crazy about tandem bucktails, but this one I love. Not only does it, you know, and the key thing with the bucktails is the noise and sound that it's making. Yep. You know, people got onto this big bait, you know, big blade thing. And it's not a bad thing. It just pushes a lot of water. Yep. But when you change the blades and they start banging, that's where the sound of vibration mm -hmm. comes through. But he also has a stinger on the back, and it bangs on that wire. Um, this is probably one of the best-kept secrets up in the Green Bay. A lot of locals are familiar with this bait, and uh, they use these. They've caught a lot of big fish, but it's called a Huntsy Tail. And, uh, you know, they'll definitely have a booth there this year. I'm going to give you this because I know you, I saw you eyeing that thing up. Oh, yeah. That will be a good one. <laughs> you were, you know, touching. So, but I think you'll, it's a truly, it's got a lot of sound and vibration. And I, I think you'll like the bait. Perfect. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it, it's kind of a bucktail. Last year, and I've been doing this for years, and a lot of people are not, you know, I don't, they haven't caught on to this. But I've always fished a lot of jigs. Sure. Late spring, early summer, post frontal conditions, first two weeks of August for some reason. I've done very well with jig fishing. I use basically a flipping stick with a beast, uh, it's uh, 40, mm -hmm. you know. I use a 100 pound fins braid because 40G is the size of like 12 pound 12, mono. Yeah, it's amazing. The it, the size to power ratio of the fins line. Yes. Uh, a lot of, you know, 80 or 100 pound is 16, 17. Right. Uh, amount of filament equivalent. Right. This stuff is the 40 G uh, is by some, far smaller. I mean, 30 to 50% smaller, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. And, and as strong as can be. Yeah. It's a nine end braid. It's basically got a core and then it's got eight bundles. Okay. So there's a lot, it's very dense. I know Vince uh, DeMarty was throwing it quite a bit this uh, fall, this winter. Uh, when I say winter, they were fishing in December oh, yeah. and throwing gliders. And he said, my hands never got wet. Yeah. It's that dense. Mm -hmm. So, but anyways, this here is, is a underspin. This is from Cougar Baits. Um, it's one of my go-to. Matter of fact, uh, Max Kaufman, the owner of this company, makes all my musky jigs. Right. I know you haven't had a really chance to try these yet, have you? Not that. I've got a couple of his bucktails and yep. one of his jigs. Yep. They look amazing. It's just I've got so much stuff to well, try you to You got throw. something to add to all the right, list. perfect. This will be another one hopefully we can oh, put I'm forward. just telling you, they work yeah. really well. And there's guys catch a lot of fish, you know, on them. And, and most guys don't know. So that, that's just a few of the bucktails. Perfect. Bucktails, there's so many bucktails on the market, okay? Yep. But those are things that stand out. The biggest thing I think that, you know, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, you know, this, when I've gone to the shows, this has been something that everybody, gets everybody's attention. Yeah. Chaos Tackle came out with a new heavyweight crankbait. They make a heavyweight glider, but this has been stealing the show. A lot of people have been looking for these. Uh, I guess it was a big thing up in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but this here, it's got a heavy aluminum lip. So, uh 
but this is really attracting a lot of attention. Yeah, that's I cannot important. give this to you. Uh, <laughs> Vince made it very clear that this belonged to my wife Penny, Perfect. and she's made it very clear that I better bring it back or I will sleep outdoors, you know, tonight. So well, you better take that one home then. Yeah, she'll definitely be upset if I don't have that there. I'm gonna jump in here. Just you go out ahead. Just because I've used these before, and you guys have have seen these. These are Rusty's custom lures. Uh, this is the six sucker. Is that a seven inch? That's a seven inch. You All right, I've got the six and this is his uh, counter punch uh, spy bait Really cool bait one of the ones that I've got and I just never got to use But it's probably because I was using I've got a six inch six sucker and a seven inch Fortune teller and I tell you what that little dangly blade on the back of these things is amazing for a glide bait It's actually anybody can work that bait. Yeah I don't care at what level of experience that you have, the Six Sucker is a great bait. Yep. It's an easy bait for beginners, but let me tell you something. I don't get it. Maybe it's because musky fishermen are too stubborn, but let me tell you, this is kind of like a hard bait. Uh, this is like a hard bait uh, bucktail. Mm -hmm. If you jump on my on my what you, page or whatever, yep. on my Facebook page, you'll see an underwater uh, view of this bait. This thing is loud as can be. Oh yeah, the, the audio you get from this when you have a camera under the water, yeah. it doesn't look like it's doing much when you throw it uh, above the water, but when uh -huh. you, get, you hear that noise underneath the water, it is grinding the whole time. This is a great bait, yeah. and most people haven't caught on to this. Yep. And because musky fishermen are so set in their ways, but you need to definitely, this should be a standard bait in the box. When you know areas that you would normally fish bucktails, when you need to get a little bit deeper, this bait will fill in beautifully. Mm -hmm. It's very versatile, great post funnel bait, suspended fish. It just, it works. It, it uh, is a great bait, but yet musky fishermen haven't caught mm -hmm. on to it. Rusty makes a good quality bait. He period. makes an awesome bait. He really he's a great it. guy. He's a great guy. I met him at the show last year. You told me I have to go talk to this guy. Uh, I am planning on fishing with him this year. I, I fished with him last year in Indiana. Uh, I heard. A great friend of mine now, and uh, I'm just I'm excited to see him again. Guess what? Well. You're going down right after the show. I'm coming down to fish with you. You didn't know that, did you? I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> No, Perfect. I'm just, no, he did tell me, no, we're going to get some time this year. We're going to make oh, yeah. time to get out there. Yep. So, you know, we'll get to that, you know, but, you know, this is a second year there. Show this man some love. Yep. Okay, a Absolutely. great guy. Uh, this is what he does for a living. He makes baits every day. They're good, good quality. And, uh, you know, you won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stop the camera for a second and start right back up because this thing only goes. All right, we're back. Well, we got another half hour. I don't yeah. think we'll need it. No, we're just we're getting <laughs> close here. I'm just what we're trying to do is I, I think here's a problem with musky baits. I've never seen as many musky baits on the marketplace today as I have today. Right. And people are like, well, which one do I buy? So what's happening is becoming it's kind of like almost like gangsters. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my gang. This is my gang. It's not about that. It's yeah. about you know after 55 years, and I can't believe it's been that long, <laughs> but I've kind of gotten to the point where you know baits are tools mm -hmm. and I feel that some of the baits I use are probably some of the best not saying everybody else's baits are bad right I'm just saying that I've kind of got it down to where you know I understand the little it of secrecies mm -hmm. we were talking about uh, you know Rusty's sick sucker that is a great bait mm -hmm. for beginning musky fishermen have a tough time working a glider yeah you know but one of the gliders, and, 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 and they're good. My wife loves them. Yep. But, you know, there's some gliders besides a six sucker, which I keep in the boat for people that don't understand gliders, that they'll use a six sucker. But some of the baits that I'm using. I'll grab this one. Is a bait called a glitch. And, and listen, baits are tools. And mm -hmm. when fish follow your baits to the boat, they follow because I don't believe that's what they do. It's because I don't believe that you have the bait in the strike zone. Sure. You know, or maybe there's not enough sound, or maybe there, it's moving too fast or too slow. But they follow because that's not what they do. It's because it's the bait is not in the strike zone. I don't care about size. You know, that to me is a fallacy. Mm -hmm. If you put, you know, this is a creature of nature. You put that bait in its face and you're in the proper strike zone, 
you're going to catch it. Yep. Doesn't That's, matter if it's a six inch bait or a 16 inch bait. No. I mean, if that fish is big enough to eat it, it's right. Eat it. So back to this, the glitch. This is a, what I would call a shallow water bait. You can cast this out when, when panfish or crappies are spawning mm -hmm. and this bait just hangs in sure. the water. And what they'll do is I've noticed as you're working this glitch, they'll sit there, twitch it. It'll just, it'll sit there and hang. And even if it starts to fall, it'll start to shimmy. Yep. Okay. That, rules, that shimmy on that fall. Now I fish with, uh, you, you guys have seen videos with Colin Schlick when, yeah. when we're fishing on his home waters. He catches so many fish in the on figure the fall. eight on the fall. I where believe that. I, I, can't, I can't figure out what the heck he's doing, but he catches so many fish on a glide bait right there at the boat where a lot of people have problems with it. And a bait that'll do that, does that little shimmy, that gets him to hit. That's what this bait does. And so this is his glitch. Then you've got, you've got his pedigree, and mm -hmm. the pedigree is more of a medium depth. That bait incident, that glitch, if you're fishing shallow water and you have fish that are neutral or inactive, that is the bait, mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Um, this is the pedigree. Okay. Excellent okay. bait. Another one that uh, it runs medium depth. You can run a medium retrieve. Mm -hmm. Fish will come up. One thing I've noticed about the glitch, when those fish hit it, they're very aggressive. Sure. There is no following. They they, they eat, eat it. They, they try right. They don't even mess around. Yeah. But this bait here also, it's a, another easy you know to work bait. But I've done well with them. The guy that makes these puts a lot of time and effort. You can look at his paint jobs. Mm -hmm. I know you've been eyeing this up, and you know what? I'm going to let you have this. Perfect. Okay, because I know you're going to want to play. I love like again like I said with rusty stuff and with this. I love the little blades on glide baits. It's it's a new thing that I kind of got onto with rusty stuff. Yep. I think this is a very cool. And you know what? Both of these guys don't know each other. Yep. And they just happen to come out with this at the same time. Sure, yep. So, yep. but I'm going to let you take that one. Awesome. Looking forward okay. to using that one. I'll go talk to Mike. I'll get another one. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know what? You got chaos tackle. You know, chaos. You know, here. they've come a long way. I think they have. I think, you know, their paint jobs, everything that they're doing, these baits are excellent. We were talking about strike zone. This bait here, this is a blunt nose, and this is a favorite amongst a lot of people. This is one of my favorite patterns. I like the browns, the yellows, a lot mm -hmm. of contrast in these. This has got that bait where it'll take and it'll, it'll shimmy as it's sinking. But once you get this bait down, you work it slow, you get it in their face and they're going to eat it. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people throw rubber. Rubber's good, but I would like to, I normally would like to throw a glider, and this is a great cold water glider. The blunt nose is one of my favorites because it gets deeper than it's the uh, round nose. The round nose. And I can work a round nose a little faster. Yep. So let's say you're fishing in July mm -hmm. and, you know, you're, you got warmer water. I can work the round nose a little faster yep. and it still stays down deep but I can work it faster, whereas you can't do that with a blunt nose. That has been an awesome, awesome bait mm -hmm. for me. And that color there is called the tequila. The one thing that I was really impressed with this year is I've gone to the shows and I've looked at some of the gliders that Chaos is making. Listen, they're, they're, these gliders don't take a back seat to nobody. You know, and they're as good as any glider that's out there in the marketplace. There's a place for both of them. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely a bait that's a standard in my box. Oh yeah. Yep. I've had so many people I took out fishing this past year and now all of a sudden it's they see. That's an that's an Iowa Iowa Spring special for me. Oh, uh, I believe I love, that. Love but it. most people, you know, they know Chaos as a, you know, making the Medusa or the 2020 or, you know, the original assault sticks. Yep. But let me tell you, they make one of the best gliders on the market as well as other baits that they make. Oh, yeah. The Navin. Oh, yeah. 8-inch Navin. It's, it's a big thing with a lot of fishermen. Oh, yeah. I love that one, but too. But <laughs> you definitely want to stop and check these out at the show. So um, the last glider I'm going to mention is we talked about Tom Harrison. Mm -hmm. About, you know, Tom has a bait company. This is Tom's Super Glide. This was a sensational hit at the show. Uh, there's guys that caught a lot of big fish. Definitely stop by Tom's uh, booth. You guys are going to get an eye opener. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> There's going to be an eye opener. But Tom, you know, same thing. This bait here, I noticed some guys bought them and they're trying to work them fast. Mm -hmm. Not all gliders are made to work fast. Right. This bait, when you twitch it, it'll hang. Now the difference is it'll start to wobble. But when it does, it drops head first going down. Yep. 
and I'm telling you, that's when you'll get a big fish. Um, I got a 48 uh, and a quarter this year on one of these. Um, I know of guys, several guys that got, you know, 47, 48s and bigger. Yep. Okay. And uh, this is definitely a great bait. And uh, Tom's getting at the age where I question how long that he's going to keep making baits. <laughs> sure, and yeah. So I have lots. I really do. It's a great bait. It's a slower working glider. These younger guys want to move fast all yep. the time. Not everything works fast. Mm -hmm. You got to put it in their face, and this is one of those baits that do that. Sure. So that is another one to look at. Before the next one, shameless self promotion. I'm gonna no. have some hoodies. Actually, <laughs> where are you gonna have the hoodies at? I'll, uh, I'll just be hanging out in the chaos booth uh, okay. most of the weekend. So probably in the uh, fins booth a little bit. In the fins booth a little bit. So if you need one, you can either send me an email, anglinganarchy at gmail.com after you see this video and I can uh, bring you one, have you have it set aside uh, or just find me at the expo, I'll be there. Yeah, they, they, you know, they're classy looking, you know, uh, hoodies. They look nice, I think that's, yes. yeah, embroidered. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's a well-made hoodie, it's, it, it, it's a quality hoodie, yep. so. All right, back to baits. <laughs> no, nah, it's all good. This is another bait, these are very hard to come by. Look at that, that's his sucker, oh, that's Tom's sucker that's, pattern. That's a cool pattern. It's... That's called a bear bait. Um, that bait is kind of like a Rapala. Mm -hmm. I can't get it done. Some of these baits are very limited. There we go, there it's in focus. That's a cool pattern, man. Some of these baits are very limited. This has got great action. Mm -hmm. And some of these baits he's bringing to the show is uh, very limited. So this is another bait he that's makes, it's a cool little one. fat shad. Uh, that has been amongst some of the guys has been a really good bait over on Green Bay. Tom doesn't advertise, he doesn't push anything. I think, you know, you talk about self-promotion, yep. I'm doing this for Tom because he's a 72 year old, great musky man. He makes some really good quality baits, they're tough as nails. I'm gonna tell you, I could take a hammer to this bait mm -hmm. and I ain't gonna phase it. And they're really tough baits, they're made out of resin. There's a lot of work involved in these things, but uh, he continues to make good quality baits and I hope he continues doing it for Absolutely. a while. Last bait I'm gonna bring up, and a lot of people don't understand this. I mentioned big guy baits yep. before. Babe, you know, he's making the riches ambushes now, but prior to that, he made a minnow bait that most people didn't understand. I did right away when I saw it, but it was called a seven inch shell. The problem is everybody was out there trying to twitch that bait, and that's not what it was made for. Sure. It was made to pull the bait coming through the water. Yeah. And when you do that, it's kind of like a, like a, like a dive and rise. But the, the cool thing about the bait was it only runs 12 to 14 inches under the oh. water. Well, when you're fishing back in shallow bays or you're fishing back, you know, in some flats or stump fields or whatever, this bait's only running, you know, 12 to 14 inches. Yep. Those fish come up. Now, this one here is the countdown. And that bait is a true countdown. It just, it counts down. It, you can run it to wherever you want. But last, the last two years, the guys that have been throwing these have been catching a lot of nice fish on them. And keeping their mouth shut. I mean, think about sure. this. Oh, yeah. November, December, you go out and catch three to five fish, you know, on a late fall day like that, that's pretty impressive mm -hmm. with that colder water. And this is the bait they've been using. They've been doing real well, well, well with this. Um, I know guys on Pewaukee, Oconomowoc. I know guys on the Madison chain. Have you ever tried one of these? I've not tried one. You yet. know, well now you can, All right. you know, so you can awesome. try that as well. So, but that's been, and it has been a good bait. I'm more of a seven inch shallow, yep. you know, he makes some other baits. Um, as well, but stop by, see him. He's a great guy to deal with. He is. He's yeah. just a good guy. Yeah, he's a good dude. The last thing I'm going to bring up mm -hmm. is is the fins line. Yep. You know, again, we talked about using a quality line. I'm going to tell you something right now. Fins is not a new line. Mm -hmm. It's been around forever. It's just their private label. Yep. And I do work for the company. They came to me. I was like, I really don't want to work doing this anymore, <laughs> but I do believe in the product. I was using it for two and a half years before they ever came to me. Uh, I believe in Dave Birch. You know, I believe in Killian Downey. Yep. Uh, they're great people. Uh, it's a great product. Uh, I've heard people say, well, you know, I don't know about this or that. Here's the fact is, chances are you may have used the line already in and another brand. And just didn't brand even know it. And didn't even know it. Exactly. And you're not going to know it, yep. you know, because 
but this is their private label. And the reason they came out with that is a lot of companies left the States yep. and went to China. Mm -hmm. And the fact of it is this is made in America. This yep. is USA made. I've been in the factory. The people that work there are awesome people. They take a lot of pride in making this product. Mm -hmm. The thing that's really cool, the average employee at Finn's has been there for 15 years. That's pretty amazing. Think about that. Yeah. Yeah. 15 years and they're still with this company. They treat their people right. They make a quality product. They have a lot of pride. That's what really sells me yeah. on the product. And now you guys have seen me use this the past year. Um, I didn't want to push it too hard because right? I wanted to try it first. I wanted to tell people I was using it. I tell you what, it's the first line. You know, you mentioned this earlier. I was that guy going through the, the bargain, like, oh, uh, suffix or power pro, doesn't matter to me. I've never had bad luck with any line, so I didn't have a horse in the game, or a horse in the race, as they say. Right. Rich asked me to throw this stuff. As soon as I put it on, it's the first line I've ever used where I cast it, and I said, oh, that casts a lot nicer. I mean, that was just the first thing I noticed. Uh, the strength is amazing. It holds its color. Uh, the 40G, I put on my power, or uh, on my... Uh, Tranks 500 yep. for rubber, uh, late season. Uh, my hands never got wet. It does not hold any water. Uh, the, the power to diameter ratio is really high because that braid is so tight. I'm sure that's what keeps the water out of it is that it braid is. is so tight. It is, it's really an amazing line. Well, I will tell you this, you know, it, it's colored line. If you mm -hmm. open this spool here, this is green. Now, I will tell you something. And here's some of the myths. Everybody said, well, gosh, my line fades. Power, uh, you know, when you look at these lines, okay, fins, this will eventually will fade. Sure. Because poly, polyethylene, PE, does not hold color. I don't care what brand, what co company has it, it does not hold color. Eventually it will fade. Mm -hmm. This brand actually holds color a little bit longer. Sure, yeah. You know, due to the extrusion process and the resin that they're using, and the way they treat this line, they use a non-petroleum product, mm -hmm. you know, which almost epoxies all the fibers together, but it holds up. Uh, you know, I've heard some guy, well, you know, I've gotten wet. Mm, I have a hard time, you know, kind of, you know, because I've used a lot of their different lines, and the water retention is a lot less with this stuff than yes. I've used with other lines. And that's not a bad thing, but when you're fishing in the late fall, and you're getting soaked. Some companies believe in making raw lime. Mm -hmm. And if it's raw and it's not treated, it's gonna soak up water, period, end. Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of guys want to debate with you on Facebook. <laughs> I just quit because yeah. they, they know it all. It was, I think, we, what do we call those? Uh, uh, keyboard warriors oh, yeah. or something like yeah. that. They've always got something to say. <laughs> and they really don't know what they're talking about half the time. Yep. You know, I'm the wrong person they want to get into a debate <laughs> with because prior to working for this company years ago, I used to work with Cortland. Mm -hmm. So I understand a little bit about how this stuff is made and what they do to actually make it, not just with this company, but other companies as well. Sure. You know, it's good, it's good quality line. It's yep. made in the USA and just give it a try, you know. But overall, there's a lot of new, you know, a lot of new product there. It amazes me every year when I walk into the show, Brian, it's all set up and I walk in there at seven o'clock in the morning and go, I'd really like to put a dollar value oh, on all the here? musky tackle. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, Brian, you come down this year early and you'll, it'll hit you when you start walking down the aisle and realize how much musky tackle really is in that building. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Awesome. It, it's, you know, so we've been doing it for 15 years. Uh, we've kind of really catered towards a family environment, and we see it more and more where husbands and wives and their kids are coming. Yep. I'm glad to see it. You can see the demeanor with everybody there. Everybody's pretty happy and yep. go lucky, and everybody's <laughs> having a good time, and that's what we want. We that's want awesome. people to have a good time. Folks, it is an amazing show. You need to come check it out. It is March 15th through 17th. And yeah, everybody's going to be there. So you should be too. I want to give a big thanks to my good friend Rich here uh, for coming down to Janesville and uh, doing this with me. So we didn't, I figured this would be a better way to do it than over the phone yeah. like we did last year. It's a little bit more fun. We can look at some of the baits and that sort of thing. So right. thanks, buddy. I appreciate but it. Everybody come down and get your Anglian <laughs> Anarchy hoodie. Wow. Thanks, buddy. All right, everybody. I appreciate every single one of you watching this, and I'll see you on the next video.